I talk low voice. So my my topic here, my group is doing nuclear te reactor thermodynamic and safety. So safety is my area, and safety is not observable. We study safety, but safety is not observable. What observable is unsafety. So sometimes until we have accident, then we, we, we realize that we have something unsafe. So that safety is uh, illusion. So chasing after illusion is something very tough. And uh, so this is two areas that my research, the hydraulic and safety research. Uh, I'm doing stuff, very classic, classical stuff. Nuclear the hydraulic, we're talking about uh, turbulent flow, containment the hydraulic, two-phase flow, uh, in a core and in a system, boiling heat transfer. Uh, you, you learn a lot about the hydraulic. You know that this is basic, basic thing in 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 uh, in the hydraulic. Uh, it, it preventing uh, boiling crisis happening in nuclear reactor. So it becomes safe to become unsafe. And and my area, uh, the one I've been working for 20 years, is severe accident risk assessment and management. Uh, we we do uh, assessing the risk. Or accident because one all, all we care about safety is uh, risk of accident. How do we access the risk and then managing the risk? And what happened in a nu nuclear reactor is we, we deal with a very high consequential hazard, severe accident, but that very low probability. And risk is something probability and consequences. We deal with uh, probability of small number and consequences very large number and take, take multiplication of the most small number and large number and then we have to deal with the risk. So uncertainty become very important part, assessing that. Uh, so I'm dealing with live water reactor for non live water reactor, multi-hazard, external event, emergency response, and, and accident management. So those are very traditional thing. Basically, my research is very traditional thing. Uh, but we try to do that in a non-traditional way. So those are classical thing. But even in red, you try to, uh, my students are working on application machine learning to really looking at, uh, at the hydraulic from machine learning point of view and uh, emergency response, we talk about operator and we talk about how to use artificial intelligence to enhance operator function to deal with emergency response. Yeah, so, so basically, traditional thing, but I'll try to approach that in a different way. And of course, everybody talking about modeling, simulation, and validation. And that's something I'm working on. This is a typical project that we currently, current project we have, severe accident analysis funded by USNRC, uh, funded by INL. We have, a, we have an integrated research project on validation funded by DOE, and we're working with faculty from NC State, Professor Avramova, Professor Bullard-Nob, uh, with Michigan, Purdue, and researcher from I, I, I National Lab and Industry. We, so really, the question here is that, how do we know that your code is mature for the purpose? Because many times you, you do safety analysis. Safety analysis, you need a prediction. You need prediction, meaning that you need to use a computer code to do that. And how, how do you know that the computer code actually is valid? You can have validation for laminar flow for 20 uh, uh, cases. But you apply that for turbulent flow, then you, you, are, you are not having any luck to make convincing USNRC that you are uh, having a valid code. So the question is how to really make sure that the, the code that you are using is mature for the intended ap application. So basically, it's related to decision making. So that that is something. This uh, this thing we are moving. We are like I said, mentioned that the class, classical way is like this. Classical way is that you do experiment, uh, take a four or five years to design an experiment, four or five years to really uh, execute an experiment, get get a student to work on that, uh, through three generation of students to really work on getting a model. So basically, we go from taking them years to decade to really make a mechanism, understanding mechanism, develop a model, and then we apply that for simulation and assessing that and application and improve the knowledge base. That's something we, we, we think very dearly before the theory base. Theory base is modern base framework. And it likes to say that it, uh, researcher, a graduate student play a very important role in experiment execution, designing experiment, and then do processing data and develop model. But now the new framework coming in, uh, here is the one we are pursuing. The experiment coming out, we have a 3D standard data, uh, high resolution image, imaging, a lot of data coming out. You actually not <laughs> applying data analysis, analytics, big data. You have a terabyte of data, you have data analytics, you have machine learning. And machine learning you have driving data driven frame, modeling framework. In that process, you can really process the data in a matter of hours and days instead of years. 
you have a new experiment, you can be ready to do the processing. So basically, the, the whole process here is trying to eliminate you, eliminate nucleogenia from, from the process. Because uh, uh, many times our research function has been done by people, but you now uh, it analyzes the data. But then you now we're talking about machine learning to bring in, to, to enhance the, the way we are doing research, accelerating the research process a lot. Yeah. So this is something we are working on to, to, to do apply machine learning to the hydraulic. We have a new project uh, from funded by APAE. Uh, APA, APA is an uh, advanced research project and, and uh, also with collaboration with uh, Professor Apromova and a uh, number, number of other faculty and uh, national lab. So the idea here is that, the idea of the project here is that you know that in nuclear power plant, uh, of, uh, the operator play a very important role. They, we have to train the operator based on safety analysis, based on simulator training, and then and, and, and the emergency response, they have to diagnose the situation, make a prognosis, and then make a decision making. We put a lot of pressure on the operator, and that's why 90% of the time they make mistakes. Uh, and all um, error, error come from, uh, uh, human error is uh, immense uh, source of, uh, init causing initiating event in nuclear power plant. So the question here is how do we uh, help the operator? So basically the new system here is that we, we are putting diagnosis, prognosis and decision making into uh, uh, artificial intelligence. So uh, artificial intelligence can actually, uh, uh, instead of really looking at four, three or four instruments, uh, computer can, can look at 100, uh, 100 signal channel and then do processing and then give you, give you tr after training, it give, give you operator uh, a way to uh, make, make uh, opera, run a plan, put plan in a safe, case, safe, safe space. So thi this, is, this is something we are working on now that really putting diagnosis and prognosis and decision making into, into, uh, uh, into a system that allow you to have the operator focusing on the way you need to focus. Put, put pressure, because you, you understand that operator under accident condition is a very hard, hard time, under high, high stress condition, under, under uncertainty, and, uh, and, uh, and they prone to make a wrong decision. So the question here is that uh, the first part, um, we are trying to, to help researcher to accelerate, accelerate the research, and in this part, we try to, we try to use machine learning and artificial intelligence to help the operator to uh, run the plan, especially under emergency condition. So very traditional thing, but hopefully bring in a, a new line based on machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. Any question?